Welcome to our instructional video on the placement of ultrasound guided subclavian vein central venous catheters. This video will go over reasoning for the use of the subclavian vein as a preferred location for central line insertion, as well as important concepts and techniques to safely place these lines using ultrasound guidance. This tutorial is intended for healthcare professionals who are expected to place central lines as part of their scope of practice and assumes a basic understanding of the steps involved in routine placement of these catheters. This video is not meant to be a substitute for bedside teaching with an experienced operator and should not be used as a standalone means to learn this technique. Central lines are routinely placed for multiple reasons including inadequate peripheral access, administration of caustic medications, parenteral nutrition, invasive hemodynamic monitoring, and advanced therapies such as plasmapheresis and hemodialysis. Common complications of central line placement include arterial puncture, catheter malpositioning, hemorrhage and hematoma, pneumothorax, cardiac arrhythmias, and thrombosis. Central line associated bloodstream infections or CLABSIs are of particular concern due to their high degree of patient morbidity and increased health care costs. The most common sites for central line placement are the internal jugular veins, the subclavian veins, and the femoral veins. With the use of ultrasound guidance techniques, the internal jugular vein has gained popularity as the preferred location. In order to identify which of these major vessels was safest to access, the three site study group conducted a multi-centered, randomized controlled trial which compared central lines placed in the internal jugular veins femoral veins, and subclavian veins for rates of complications. Results published in the New England Journal of Medicine showed a significantly decreased incidence of symptomatic deep venous thrombosis and bloodstream infections with the use of a subclavian vein site. However, there was an overall increase in mechanical complications including cannulation of the subclavian artery, pneumothorax, and chylothorax in this group. Notably, the use of ultrasound guidance was optional in this cohort. Several mostly observational studies have suggested that the use of ultrasound guidance for placement of subclavian lines is associated with decreased time to vessel access, higher success rates with fewer attempts, and decreased incidence of pneumothorax, arterial puncture, and nerve injury. There are also similar rates of catheter misplacements. Now we will review pertinent anatomy. The main bones to identify are the clavicle, sternum, and first rib as depicted in this diagram. Venous drainage of the upper extremities join into the axillary vein, which becomes the subclavian vein as it passes the lateral edge of the first rib posterior to the clavicle. The subclavian artery is usually posterior and superior to the subclavian vein. With traditional landmark technique, the introducer needle is inserted close to the bend of the clavicle usually aiming towards the sternal notch at the superior border of the sternum. The needle is parallel to the skin after being fed underneath the clavicle in order to access the subclavian vein with minimal chance of pneumothorax. Next we will review the ultrasound technique which uses two probe orientations. The first is transverse view in which the plane of the probe is perpendicular to the vessel. The second is the longitudinal view in which the plane of the probe is parallel to the vessel. This cartoon depiction shows the transverse view where the vessel appears as a circle in cross section when the probe is held perpendicular to it. If the probe is rotated 90 degrees while keeping the center over the vessel, we obtain the longitudinal view. The beam width of most ultrasound probes is around one millimeter, which is about the size of a pen tip. On the right, we show how the longitudinal view shows the vessel in length as it courses across the screen. Here, we demonstrate the transverse view when the ultrasound probe is placed on the right superior anterior chest wall, just medial to the axilla. The ultrasound probe marker is physically turned towards the patient's head and set on the left side of the screen on the ultrasound machine. The left side of the screen will now represent superior. Immediately underneath the skin is the pectoralis muscle. 
The two hypoechoic circles shown are the axillary vein and artery. Please note that the artery has a slightly rounder shape and is pulsatile. It is essential to also identify the pleural line, which is usually a hyperechoic linear structure posterior to the soft tissue and vessels. With respirations, the pleural line can be seen shifting up and down, representing normal lung sliding. The absence of lung sliding can suggest pneumothorax and other pathologies. As we slide the probe more medially, we can now identify the clavicle as a large hypoechoic structure superficial to the vessels. At the lateral border of the first rib, these vessels change name to the subclavian vein and artery. Let us demonstrate the same progression now with a live video representation. As we start lateral on the chest, we once again see the axillary artery and vein. Also visualized here is the cephalic vein, which will feed into the axillary vein. As the probe slides medially, we now identify the subclavian vein and artery. With the vein in the center, the probe is turned 90 degrees with the marker towards the operator to obtain the longitudinal view. Here is the subclavian vein in longitudinal view. Once again, we see normal lung sliding immediately below. Oftentimes in longitudinal view, the subclavian vein is partially obscured on ultrasound by the more superficial clavicle. Adding a slight tilt with the ultrasound probe tip pointed more towards the patient's head can overcome this to give a clearer view and route for needle access. After proper sterile draping and gowning, the operator stands on the side of the patient which the line will be placed with the ultrasound screen on the other side of the bed. The subclavian vein is shown in longitudinal view. Here we see the pectoralis muscle groups, normal lung sliding, and a view of the first rib which appears as a hypoechoic structure posterior to the vessel and front of the pleural line partially obscuring it. With the probe marker facing the operator, the introducer needle is inserted immediately adjacent to the probe. Slight adjustments occur to have the needle stay in the thin plane of view provided by the ultrasound. The hyperechoic needle line can be seen advancing with the operator aspirating back on the syringe. As the needle tip enters the vessel, dark venous blood is aspirated into the syringe and the probe is placed aside to stabilize the needle. The guide wire is then inserted. And the needle is removed. The ultrasound shows the guide wires traversing soft tissue into the subclavian vein in this confirmatory step. The operator then dilates the vessel, threads the central venous line over the wire, and removes the wire to complete placement of the line. Now we will review a few pitfalls to keep in mind. In the longitudinal view, extra care should be taken to maintain the thin 1 mm beam through the center of the vessel. Inadvertently, scanning to the edge of the vessel can cause the beam width artifact, which is a distortional image of the walls of the vessel that can be confused for the main target. Moving the probe even more in the same direction will then cause the vessel and artifact to disappear. It's essential to maintain the needle in the plane of the probe as well. Here the needle starts off appropriately, but is seen leaving the correct plane. This is dangerous as the needle tip advanced without visualization is at increased risk of injuring the lungs and subclavian artery. If this occurs, the needle should be retracted. It should only be advanced if the needle tip can be visualized to avoid complications. 
With that, we come to the end of this video. We hope you found it useful as an introduction to the techniques in the safe placement of ultrasound guided subclavian central lines. Thank you for watching and feel free to contact the creators of the video with any questions.